Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so excited today to be talking about the film She Will. We are joined today by director and co-writer Charlotte Colbert, as well as actress Alice Krieger, who plays the lead role of Veronica. And, and Charlotte, starting with you, um, I want to talk a little bit about your initial involvement when you first came on board this project, um, not only as a director, but also as a co-writer alongside the script that Kitty Percy had, had already put together a draft of. Um, it sounds like it really connected with a lot of themes that you've explored in your other work and as an artist, as a filmmaker in your short films. Um, but I but I loved kind of noting that you've talked about how a lot of the nature imagery, that use of, of mud and that real connection to the earth was something that you really wanted to bring to the foreground in the story. And so I was really interested in when you looked at, at Kitty's draft, once you started collaborating together on the draft of the script, where you really saw opportunities to enhance and involve evolve certain aspects like that well wow, so cool um um yes yeah, so kitty had this really cool well uh, you know really interesting script um because at, at the core of it this this very interesting concept i thought of sort of uh revenge but curative catharsis through dreams in some ways um and I thought something so amazing about that because it's sort of taking the whole idea of psychoanalysis in like blowing it apart in a pop sort of <laughs> horror type way, uh, which seems super interesting. And so I guess like the, 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 yeah, nature seems so inherent to that. And in terms of connecting to, I guess, uh, a historical um, archive within the land, um, uh, it felt like, a, like an interesting way in, I guess. Um, so, I mean, to clarify that, <laughs> there's a woman who suffers a trauma and goes to this place and in that place um, is, is, is where a lot of people have been uh, executed for, for, and condemned for, for witchcraft. And so they're sort of ashes imbue the land with that kind of um, hurt, I guess, and that injustice. And they imbue the lead character to sort of uh, confront past traumas and 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 sort of go towards her past um and then I guess with Alice we really also brought in nature and and the way I think Alice got a, a huge love and affection of of the cosmos and the stars and and the actual setting is so big and vast I think nowhere in Scotland like Scotland is the sky like so wide it's sort of this enormous scape you know it's very it's sort of very wild sort of a desert really in some ways like a green desert but you know it's all being chopped and like so there's like these just immense fields and there's this peat which is really fossilized memory you know layers and layers and layers of sort of I don't know DNA dinosaur <laughs> type stuff, you know, like the sort of origin of it. Um, so yeah, I think it was quite interesting this idea of nature having um, having a say as well and taking sides. And in a way, like I guess there's a tradition of of nature as a female force if you look at indigenous cultures and stuff. Um, but yeah, in our in our little way, I guess we <laughs> adapt and wanted to discuss those kind of those kind of things. Um, yeah, there's solace in nature, isn't there? I think in the scale of it and the lack of human intervention. <laughs> Yeah, and no, I really, really loved a lot of those details. And obviously, um, you know, Charlotte there was mentioning, Alice, you know, some of the aspects of your character with the fact that she is reconnecting with this past trauma, but you're also then also playing a character who's just gone through the medical procedure of having a double mastectomy and that what that recovery looks like and what that means for her. And and I wanted to ask you a bit about some of the research that, that you did in that regard, because it sounds like you did have a lot of conversations with people you knew that had been through that particular procedure or similar procedures. Um, um, and then actually it was a friend of yours that kind of really said that that there was a necessity for this character to be like a phoenix rising through the ashes with a lot of real defiance to her. And so how did those conversations that you were having as part of your research really shape the defiant aspects that you've carried throughout the film and really have made such a central part of her? Um, a very dear school friend who I met when I was nine and, and we only had two years of school together, but we remain connected. Um, and she is a particularly defined um, character. She, she has a profound horror of injustice. And it really, I think she was subjected to quite a lot of it as, as a child and a teenager. And it, it 
marked her in the most positive way because she has fought for justice for the underdog ever since, be it children in juvenile court because she became a district um, a, a attorney defending children who had been sent to court. Um, and now she defends trees. She plants Native American rare trees. So there is so much of, of Jenny in, or maybe I shouldn't have said her name, so much of her in, in, in Veronica. And she underwent um, not a full mastectomy, but the whole process of, of grappling with breast cancer. And I called her and I said, can you bear to talk to me about, about this? And she said, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> so, and the, 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 the takeaway with her wonderful sense of humor, she said at one point, um, you cannot let it grind you down. You have to be a phoenix rising from the flames. And I, I or the ashes really, but in our case, flames. Um, and I, I shared that with Charlotte. And I think for both of us, it became a, a sort of mantra or symbol or emblem that I personally returned to. Um, and it was immensely helpful. Um, I was very grateful to her for, for having having detailed to me, I mean, I won't tell you the story of the procedure because that's on a certain level hilarious. Just very briefly, she insisted that she be conscious while they removed. She said, I'm gonna watch you. <laughs> and the surgeon was terrified. He'd never had to operate on a fully conscious human being. But that's the level of her feistiness and tenacity. But just quickly to speak to what Charlotte said about, about nature. Um, it's, I, I feel as quite personally, um, as if I've had a limb cut off, if I am not, if I do not return to a dark sky and to nature in all its, its power, I think we forget that we come from it. I don't think they call her Mother Earth for nothing. Um, and, and I think we're in trouble when we lose our link for her, link to her and our love for her. And that was what I loved about Charlotte's vision was that it was front and center and, and hopefully will remind us how precious nature and the cause, well, they're it really. We, 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 are, we do get a bit too big for our boots. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and, and for both of you with, with the character of Veronica as well, it's it's not just about that real ferocity that, that she encapsulates, but she's also a character who's incredibly vulnerable in the film as well. And I loved the duality of how it dances between those two spaces. Um, and so how did the two of you kind of work collaboratively, both in terms of your performance, Alison, both in terms of directing this character, Charlotte, to really make sure that, that there was always this, this complexity and that you were servicing both sides of who she is as a person in, in different circumstances and different spaces? Charlotte. Alice. <laughs> Charlotte. Charlotte. <laughs> oh my God. It's so interesting characters, isn't it? Um, I read this amazing um, thing that Charlie Chaplin developed the character, the tramp, when he wore the shoes. And it suddenly like gave him that kind of um, thing, you know, that kind of just the movement. And then it gave him like the backstory and it sort of de developed the whole, the whole thing. It was interesting with Veronica, I think there was like a mix of a lot of different things like that. I think the, 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 the sort of journey that she goes on in some ways, you know, starting from like, let's say, you know, kind of prototypical, uh, image of 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 let's say the, the the put together character you know who slowly gets deconstructed in a way throughout the um, throughout the piece uh um so I think like costume also had a lot to do with it and the moments where like Alice has got this unbelievable hair I mean literally unbelievable hair <laughs> literally like <gasps> Um, she's sort of like a goddess in the mists of the of the, of the highlands, you know, with this sort of like incredible barefoot like hair like this. Anyway, we're like, 
one is the hair going to be this incredible sort of reveal this moment you know the hair is like a thing in itself um and so and so that also informs like the moments of like wildness and change and the moments of confronting one's own body and the moments of pain and 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 the moments of uh, you know that the mask I guess being taken away and stripped away I guess we all wear masks in different ways but in in this instance obviously Veronica is incredibly trapped by it and she's become her mask I guess at the beginning of the film and and she's um she's very isolated and alone because of it and so in some ways like stripping it all back coming to her sort of full self when she sort of looks at herself with this new body and this new sense of herself I guess um yeah uh, allows her to to grow <laughs> or you know to reinterpret her past in some ways to be sort of stronger or like yeah I don't know <laughs> but Alice you know is like um um you know the thing is it was it was quite funny because during the lockdown my, my partner was like god it's crazy I think I know your face better than anyone else's and I was like I wish I could say that about you but I know Alice's face better than yours <laughs> <laughs> and there's this thing of like of Alice's face you can say well, I could watch it for, for forever you know because there's so much subtlety in her performance and and um and obviously you know I do think I don't know it's crazy like the eyes reveal everything you know the depth and the, the soul of someone as well it's amazing anyway. <laughs> <laughs> And for you, Alice, how did you kind of approach finding both of those, those sides of the character and, and kind of encapsulating how you wanted that to look within her as a character as well? But to begin with, it was all in the script. It was all there. And that was what just blew me away when I read it, the, the, the complexity of that process. It was there. And then, of course, it was in Charlotte as well. So Charlotte and I had, well, I certainly, from my point of view, had an absolutely wonderful time on the set because Charlotte was, was so immersed in the story and, and, and that journey that all I had to do was look at her behind the camera and I knew whether we were, we were doing together what, we had talked about in 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 the in the lead up to, to shooting, um, so it was. I, I Charlotte was like um, perhaps I was her alter ego rather than her being mine, <laughs> or each other's. <laughs> um, but just this this little this sort of I felt as if I um, was attached to Charlotte by an umbilical cord because <laughs> every time we said cut, I could see whether we were approaching um, lift off or not. Um, but also you, you are given um, so much by, by, by the group that surrounds the piece. Um, um, Jakarta Eleven did what was key hair and makeup and she devised, do you remember Charlotte, this, this wonderful phases of, of uh, Veronica's journey, but how the makeup would change. And we went to a, a, a remarkable makeup company, Cruelty Free, called Code 8, and they created a series of different lipsticks that, that were reflective of, of where she was in the journey and what she was feeling. So it goes from that, slash of scarlet across her face, which is meant to be a mouth at the beginning. <laughs> and by the end, it's just the softest flesh color. And that was just, I can't tell you how help that, helpful that is. And, and, and um, Sean, who, who did the costumes and Charlotte, we very, very carefully mapped how her inner journey what she was discarding, discovering, facing was was revealed in what she wore. And that is immensely important, immensely important. Um, it is the most 
magnificently collaborative process. For me personally, that's where a great deal of the joy lies in that. I mean, it's not easy, it's challenging and, and everyone is, you know, has their own point of view, but it, it is such a creative furnace. And um, it was blazing on She Will. That's amazing to hear. And, and I also was really interested for both of you in, in hearing a little bit about the process in terms of filming the scenes throughout the film where we are seeing this kind of internal dream dream moments for Veronica because it's it's essentially for both of you in directing and performing, creating two different things that are then going to live side by side. We've got, you know, what does Veronica look like when she's in this dreamlike state moment where, you know, this these are the images that are seething through her mind. And then what are the actual images that, that she's seeing that we're getting the chance to, to also watch on screen? Um, and so I was interested in kind of just hearing a little bit of the process about really finding the tone of those two different aspects of it and, and visually building it in terms of something that then lives side by side with both of those aspects on screen when we watch it. Charlotte, do you know, you. I didn't realise that, but you've, you've just made me understand something <laughs> that I hadn't fully understood because one is so in it and Charlotte was so clear about what she wanted that, that yes, when she is um, in the dimension of dream and whatever exactly that was, because it was not only dream, it was so active as a space, as a conscious space that yes, of course she was in that flowing robe and her hair was down. And when you return to her in the television studio, she's back up to the defended, um, focused um, Veronica. So yes, there were, yes, you're quite right. Do you know, I hadn't made that connection. Isn't that awful? But there we have it. Well done, Charlotte, for actually, I mean, you visualized that because that was what, what you wanted. And, and, and yes, I just, flowed into it but yes of course but there's also this amazing thing which i think is like one of my it was so um i just love that moment although because of time constraints we couldn't like spend more time on it but it was just basically alice has this background as a as a dancer and i think you can really see it in the way that um her movements are very um controlled like in terms of like she's very aware of the mean you know in terms of obviously in film everything's so heightened and big so every little movement means so much you know the twitch of a finger or whatever um and so within the we, we looked a bit also at um you know the way sleepwalkers sort of move and and how that kind of operates and the pull and the push of that and which is so, a massive thing in itself and super fascinating. I mean, just so extraordinary, isn't it? Like sleep patterns and the way that functions and stuff. And I guess we wanted to add also that kind of purpose that she's sort of pulled by this sort of energy or whatever. So as Alice said, her dreams are really active, but I just love that moment where Alice manages to, to move out of the bed. And it was the idea of like her being sort of pulled, but she sort of really managed to, to choreograph that in a, it's probably not the right pronunciation, choreograph. Anyway, whatever, this is my French side going out, I can't pronounce it now. Um, um, you know, she managed to, to, to organise that so that um, it's so graceful as well as, um, yeah, so, so it, yeah, it's very interesting the way then your, your muscle memory sort of works in your sleep and stuff. And then there's this really interesting thing, which was, um, which Alice discussed, which was in astral travelling, Basically, when you're dreaming, in order to be able to control your astral traveling, in order to be able to control your dream, you have to find your hands within your dreams. And finding your hands within your dreams then allows you to take purpose within them, to, to sort of have more control over them. And so Alice brought that, which is why she like looks at her hands outside and sort of discovers the space. It's just so fascinating, that whole... And then you find it a lot in like... I've been noticing it now, the, the hand element, even in like manga and, you know, funny sort of like perfect blue or like different sort of elements like that. And so then I've been seeing it and I was like, oh, it's, it's obviously like a very well-known thing, but, it, you know, anyway. 
<laughs> it's just quite interesting that isn't it it, it is. And um, Alice, actually, one of the other aspects of your performance that I wanted to ask you about a little bit is, is the delivery of the dialogue. Because if we if we look at your character at the beginning of the film, and particularly in reference to the relationship that she has with the character Desi, who's kind of there to care for her, um, you know, your to your character's own assertion, she prefers to be by herself. She doesn't want anyone in her physical space. And so there's, there's a real kind of like clipped nature and very direct attitude to the way that you deliver those lines and even just the tone of it's very different and then as the the movie progresses in in that relationship in particular there's kind of a real softness that starts to come into the way that you're delivering the dialogue and so I wanted to ask a little bit about how you kind of shaped that those those adjustments in delivery and if that was something that you thought about consciously as part of your preparation or if those were aspects that you just started to really naturally find in the scenes once you were shooting them. Yes the the latter I I think I didn't make a decision about it. It was just um, an expression of, of where she was at emotionally. Um, yeah, it wasn't, uh, I didn't think I, I will use this sound here. It was, it was just, it just flowed from what she was feeling and going through. Yeah, no, that's so interesting. And and Charlotte, in terms of the directing as well, I wanted to ask you about the the way that you kind of went about figuring out how you wanted to use the camera, because there's moments where there's a real stillness and or a real closeness and a real intimacy that you're creating with the camera. And then there's moments where you're kind of shifting angles or you're creating a movement that the camera is doing that that's there to make us feel very unsettled and, and very unbalanced. Um, and so what was your approach to really shot listing and finding the different stylistic techniques of how you wanted to use the camera based on how you want the audience to feel and respond at different moments throughout the film um so yeah it's really interesting because I think um the process really started with like huge amounts of mood boards and images and etc etc and then Jamie came on board and he's super wonderful and amazing our cinematographer and he um and then you know we basically did the same that we you know with each department you sort of do that kind of really in-depth understanding why what you're trying to say like how you know and what are the best ways of of expressing that I guess in a visual language and and um you know again like using these um sort of swooping um movements for dreams like as if a spirit is sort of moving we had a lot of fun with that in in um and and the drones and that that those kind of sort of elements as well um and I always think there's something very powerful about you know very close up and then as opposed to these sort of wides of nature and then suddenly everyone everything becomes a sort of character as well um and is treated sort of equally within the space um which is which is really interesting but yeah the the the, the visual language is obviously like a it's like a huge process one goes through picking all the different elements and the, making sure that um, they all gel together. And, and the production design is also very much part of that in terms of helping create the world of it. Um, yeah, it's amazing. Such a, as I said, it's, so, it's, it's such a sort of surreal, uh, mad, um, you know, amazing process, this thing of having something in your head and then seeing it form itself I you know it's sort of like the the in real life version of the metaverse you know? <laughs> yeah, and in, in stepping back back from the film in watching it what, what's quite interesting is that we are watching this this central character but it's really you know through connecting to that character it really is this much larger dialogue around processing dealing with connecting to your trauma the way that that just kind of really connects to a lot of other people and so it's this singular connected intimate story that really is telling a much larger scope and and that's part of what makes things feel unsettled as well because there's a connectivity for for people in watching it was it something did the two of you talk at all when you were filming about you know what's what's the connection that we want the audience to be having at this moment what's the tone that we feel is really going to draw them in or was it very much just about focusing on telling this singular story with this character at the center of it for the two of you what do you want to add first Alice I think that was just part of the process I in terms of you and I talking to each other Charlotte I don't think that was like a specific topic 
but it's it's part of the exchange. It's it's just wrapped up. I mean, yes, one was aware of the reverberations and, and the bigger picture, but one we were telling this specific story, but the two just go hand in hand, really. And do, do, I, I agree. I, I think, think like there's probably... something about, no, I, I was definitely just, I think there's something about trying to be truthful to the character, you know, and being really in, in for the scenes to be truthful to Veronica, I guess. Um, I, th I think it's the mark of very good writing that it's implicit. And if you are playing the character and the story, um, that bigger picture emerges anyway. Do, do you see what I'm saying? It, Absolutely. What you're saying, Charlotte, if you are truthful to the character and the writing <laughs> is, is of an order that it is so truthful and specific, that the bigger picture is implicit. You know, the, 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 the macro is, impl the, is implicit in the micro, if you see what I mean. But it's amazing you got that, so I'm very grateful. Did, did I get the order right? <laughs> yeah, no, no, I mean, I mean um, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Um, and that it came across is, is amazing as well. So um, testament to Mara as well. <laughs> There's one thing that we, that we actually haven't touched on, mm -hmm. and, and, and it was, I think it's very precious within the script, which is that the younger woman, Desi, the nurse, is equally wounded by childhood experience. Um, but her response to it is to reach out to help others who are in a similar position. Whereas Veronica's is to build this carapace, this protective wall that no one can penetrate. Um, and the, the combination of, of Desi's gentleness and patience and genuine sweetness combined with the, the I'm not sure what the word is, but that, this infusion that happens from, from the earth that, that Veronica finds herself walking on and, and the spirits of the past, the combination of those two things slowly starts to, to seep in, drip in behind the protective exterior. But ultimately, the combination of those two things offer Veronica the opportunity to trust again. Um, there, there's a, there's a, a beautifully written sequence in which she says something to the effect of, imagine that, being able to love again. Um, and I just found it immensely touching that this young woman offers this much older, very hurt and angry person a chance at redemption. It's just a very, very touching arc that we can offer each other possibility. It, it absolutely is. And I really, really love all of the details that you've shared about you know, what went into making this film and telling this story. So thank you so much to both of you for sharing all of that. Really appreciate it. And congratulations on everything with the film. Thank, thank you. you so much for such great questions. Thank you. Thank you.